So now we've been introduced to all of the subatomic particles in an atom. So we should be familiar with the proton, the neutron, and the electron. And if you remember actually how they're arranged in a in an atom, I'll quickly draw this up. In the middle, you have a nucleus made up of proton. And I'm not going to fill it up, but essentially this is going to be filled up with protons and also neutrons, which we'll do in this pink. And around it, you have orbiting these electrons. Okay, and so you could have a different number of electrons orbiting it at specific distances. And we've kind of given a part of it away. So you should know actually protons have a positive charge and neutrons have a neutral charge. And electrons have a negative charge and they have a charge we can measure in coulombs. But because the numbers tend to be very, very small, we introduce this concept of relative charge where we essentially we say the proton has a charge of plus one. And if the proton has a charge of plus one, that means we can say the electron has a charge of minus one. So we're saying that the proton and electron have an equal and opposite charge and the neutron therefore always has a charge of zero because it has no charge. Okay. And generally within an atom, that you might find naturally occurring the number of protons generally equals the number of electrons so over here what we'd have is four electrons and that would equal four protons and the reason why this is important is because as we said here the proton and the electron have an equal and opposite charge so overall the atom has no charge okay the overall the atom is neutral and actually now that we've introduced this concept of protons we can develop our idea of elements a little bit further so before we said that different elements occur when you have different types of atoms and different types of substances and actually what changes from atom to atom to cause a new element to be created is the number of protons over here so for example if we have a atom with let's say four protons this is a we'll call it element a and we can actually look this up in the periodic table what this element would be but then if we take uh, an atom and instead we discover this atom has five protons and what we've discovered actually here is a new element so these are now two different elements and anything with five protons is what we call element b and anything with four protons is what we'd call element A. And if you look at the periodic table, you can actually discover what these elements would be. And here is our periodic table again. And so essentially this number over here, the smaller number of the two, when you look at any individual box for an element, tells you the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons. Okay, so we'll actually label this on. This is what we call the atomic number. And it's actually given to us here as well. And this is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. So any element with three protons is called lithium. Over here, we called element A anything with four protons. So we can see over here in the periodic table, the thing with four protons is beryllium over here. But therefore, what we can say is that any element with four protons is called beryllium and any element with five protons is called boron. OK, so we can actually discover if we know how many protons are in the element, we can discover the name for that element. OK, so that is relative electrical charge. And we won't bother with the quiz because it's quite a simple topic.